Hi, this is Ken of Wrist Innovations, and today I would like to introduce you to the exciting world of 3D printing. I'll break down the whole process into simple, easy to understand steps. I'll cover my recommended 3D printers, filaments, equipment software and design software, and more. So why do you want to get involved with 3D printing? Maybe you want to make some simple toys or gadgets for your family or friends. Or maybe you want to start a side hustle selling your 3D designs and parts on Etsy. No matter what your specific reasons are, we all need to start at the beginning. I read somewhere that the best way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. That's the same way to tackle 3D printing because it can be a bit overwhelming at first, but if you bite off a small piece at a time, before you know it, you'll be a 3D printing maniac. So, what is 3D printing? There are two main types of 3D printing, resin printing and FDM or fused deposition modeling printing. Resin 3D printing uses a light sensitive photopolymer, which is a liquid that cures with certain wavelength of lights. I won't be covering the resin printers in this video. The more common type of 3D printers are the FDM printers. We use a spool of plastic and it's called a filament. It looks similar to what's used on a weed trimmer. The concept is to melt the plastic using a heated hot end and then push or extrude it out of the nozzle. 3D printers use special software that tells small stepper motors what direction to move in the X, Y, and Z direction to spread a thin layer of plastic onto the bed of the printer. Once it's finished the first layer, it moves to add a second layer on top of the first layer. And then it keeps repeating itself until the part is finished. Here's an example using a hot melt glue gun. We have the solid glue, which we'll pretend is the filament, and we heat up the glue until it's molten. Then we pull the trigger, which forces the hot glue out of the nozzle. Then we can just add layers on top of each other. The 3D printer nozzle diameters are typically 0.4 millimeters, while this hot melt glue gun nozzle diameter is almost 2 millimeters. The 3D printer nozzle can dispense a much finer bead of molten plastic. Next, choosing a 3D printer. Depending on what you are trying to accomplish, you don't have to actually buy a 3D printer. You don't even need to know how to design any parts in CAD software. If you have an idea for a product, you could hire a designer on Fiverr and then they would be able to provide you with your electronic file of your part. You could then send your file to a 3D printing service company such as PCBWay and they will 3D print the part for you. However, I'm going to assume that you are in the market to buy your own 3D printer so that you can make your own part. Now, there are numerous low-cost 3D printers out there. However, there are two main paths to take with 3D printers. First is the tinkerer. This is a person who really enjoys buying a $200 3D printer and then ins installs many upgrades over time to make it a more reliable printer. It usually requires a fair amount of time to make all of the adjustments to keep the printer working properly. Next is the parts maker. This is a person who just wants to make parts by having a reliable 3D printer and doesn't want to spend a lot of time tinkering with the printer to get it working. You'll need to decide which path you'd like to take and that will determine which 3D printer you should consider depending on your budget. Especially when you start out, nothing will discourage you more than not having your 3D printer reliably make parts for you. For those reasons, for a beginner, especially if you're not technically savvy, I recommend that you consider a 3D printer that's a bit more plug-and-play like, which will cost more than an entry-level $300 3D printer. The two main 3D printers that I recommend are either the Prusa Mark IV or the Bamboo Lab P1P. The Prusa Mark IV is a new model that Prusa just launched in April of this year, 2023, and it's an upgrade to the line of 3D printers that they have been making since 2012, and they are based in the Czech Republic. The cost of the Mark IV is $1,099, not including shipping and VAT taxes. The Bamboo Lab P1P is a new 3D printer model that was launched by Bamboo Lab, which is a new company that launched their first model 3D printer, the X1 Carbon, as a Kickstarter campaign during June of 2022, so about a year ago. They began offering the scaled-down version, 
called the P1P approximately six months later. Bamboo Lab is located in China. The Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon and the P1P are state-of-the-art 3D printers that have taken the 3D printing industry by storm during this past year. The cost of the P1P is $599 and the X1 Carbon is $1,199, not including shipping. I did an entire video on how I made my selection between the Prusa and the Bamboo Lab printers, and the link will be in the description below and at the end of the video. So I highly recommend that you watch that video for more detail to help you in your selection. We are interrupting your normally scheduled program to notify you of important news. On July 13th, Bamboo Lab announced the launch of their latest model 3D printer called the P1S. Initially, it looks like an enclosed version of the P1P. So this will allow you to print higher temperature plastics such as ABS and nylon and carbon composites. However, this is more than just an enclosed version of their popular P1P for the following reasons. It includes a control board fan to keep the electronics cool, a chamber regulator fan to keep the inside of the machine at a constant temperature, an auxiliary part cooling fan for improved 3D prints, a charcoal air filter to filter out the gases from the heated plastic. The price is $699, which is only $100 more than the P1P. So for all the extra features and the ability to print higher temperature plastics, this is a great bargain. They also offer the AMS, their automated material system, combination for $949, which is also a bargain because the AMS by itself costs $349. Based on this latest information, I recommend you consider the P1S, and if it's in your budget, consider the P1S with the AMS unit for only $949. Now, back to your regularly scheduled program. You know, that news anchor looks familiar. Anyway, that's fascinating news about the Bamboo Lab new model announcement. So now let's move on to filaments. Okay, let's assume you have bought a 3D printer. Next, you're going to need some plastic filaments to install on your 3D printer. The common diameter of filaments is 1.75 millimeters, and they come in many different materials and colors. So which should you use first? PLA or polylactic acid is by far the most common filament for 3D printing. It's typically made from cornstarch. The benefits of PLA is that it's easy to print, relatively low cost, and it's fairly strong. It's used for many parts such as toys, miniatures, cosplay, and other similar things. It also prints at lower temperatures, and it doesn't need an enclosure to print properly. The downside of PLA is that it can be brittle, and it can't handle hot environments, such as being in your car on a hot day. Next is PETG, or polyethylene terephthalate glycol. PETG, or PETG, is another good plastic for 3D printers. It's the same material they make bottles out of. It's stronger than PLA, and it's not as brittle, and it can handle hotter temperatures, and it's more weather resistant. It also doesn't need an enclosure in order to print good parts. This is a good choice for mechanical parts, toys, etc. The downside of PETG is that it, it can be a little stringy and be a bit more difficult to print than PLA. So I recommend you gain experience using PLA first. Next is TPU or thermoplastic polyurethane. TPU is a flexible plastic that is used when you want to make a squishy part. They come in different durometers, which is how firm the material is. TPU filament is like a limp noodle, so it can be more tricky to feed into the 3D printer. For instance, TPU can't be used in the Bamboo Lab AMS or their automated material system. It has to be hooked up on an external spool holder. TPU is very sensitive to absorbing moisture in the air, so most manufacturers recommend that you put the spool of TPU in a filament dryer at 70 degrees C for 8 hours before using it. Now, there are other filaments such as ABS and ASA, PC, and carbon-filled composites. However, they are more advanced and they normally need enclosures to print at higher temperatures. So I wouldn't recommend using those filaments until you gain some experience with the PLA, PETG, and TPU filaments. There are many brands of 3D filaments available. I recommend that if possible, when you're starting out, that you buy your filaments from your 3D printer manufacturer. 
Their filaments are tuned specifically to their printers, so you should typically run into less issues. Also, if you're having any issues and you're using your 3D printer manufacturer's filaments, then you have one source for everything. This will prevent the 3D printer manufacturer saying that it's the filament manufacturer's problem and vice versa. Now, because I bought the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, I'm mainly using their filaments, which I am very pleased with. I've also used Prusa, Esun, Protopasta, and Polymaker filaments, and I've had good success with all of them. So, where should you set up your 3D printer? I recommend that you set up your 3D printer in a room that has good ventilation. If your printer doesn't have an enclosure, you want to make sure that it can't be reached by kids or pets because the nozzle gets very hot and can easily burn someone. Also, if a child was to reach into the printer while it's running, they could get hurt from the XYZ axis moving around so quickly. You also want to place it on a sturdy table because these higher speed printers have a lot of momentum, so you don't want to have a wobbly table. Also, the printers can be noisy due to the cooling fans, so take that into consideration. Now let's talk a bit more why you want to use a printer in a well-ventilated room. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but 3D printers do emit fumes and microparticles. Volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, and ultrafine particles, UFPs, less than 0.1 microns, can easily enter our body while breathing and can cause headaches or even respiratory issues, and it's not clear what the effect of long-term exposure is of these things. The good news is that with a bit of preparation, you can set up a safe location for your 3D printer. The CDC, or Centers for Disease Control, recommend you use the printer in a well-ventilated room with lots of fresh air to dilute and remove the particles and gases. They recommend installing the printer near an open window or in a well-ventilated garage. They also recommend using PLA if given a choice because the PLA releases less gases and particles than, for instance, ABS. I'll just add that both the Prusa and Bamboo Lab offer enclosures, either as an optional kit or as an upgraded model depending on the supplier. There are also aftermarket manufacturers that make enclosures for the common 3D printers. And they also offer optional air filtration modules for their enclosed printers. I wouldn't recommend that you set up your 3D printer in your bedroom without ventilation and try to run it all night while you're sleeping. Besides the fumes and the microparticles, the printers can be very noisy with their fans, especially if you don't have an enclosure. Lastly, I highly recommend that you have a smoke detector near where you locate the 3D printer in the unlikely event of a fire. Okay, so you've set up your 3D printer and you've installed your filament of choice. So now what do you print first? I recommend that you take the easiest path first, which is to print one of the free models that your 3D printer manufacturer has provided with your printer. They've already created the necessary software to communicate to the 3D printer. So really, it's just a matter of selecting the specific model and hitting the print button. And now it's time to watch the magic happen. So after your printer has completed printing your first print, allow the printer to cool down before you remove the build plate. Once it's cooled, it's just a matter of gently flexing the build plate to remove your part. I use this plastic scraper to remove some of the calibration lines made from the printer. It's much better than trying to use your fingernails because the filament can get lodged under your fingernails and that hurts. After you've printed a handful of the free models from your 3D printer manufacturer, you're going to have more confidence to try something else that you are more personally interested in. That's where these free websites come in. My two favorite websites are Printables, which is run by Prusa, and Thangs. Both websites allow you to search for free files for just about anything you can think of and just download the files to your computer. Links are in the description below. Once you download your files into your computer, you'll need to customize them to your 3D printer by using your 3D printer manufacturer's special slicer software. You want to make sure that you understand the license requirements using the download of model files so that, for instance, there are many files that you are not allowed to start printing and selling the printed parts because you don't own the design. So let's use an example that I want to 
find and print a phone holder for my iPhone. In printables, I search for phone holders and I have several choices. I simply download the file to my computer and import it into my slicing software. So what is slicing software? When you import a model design into the slicing software, you will use the software to slice your design into hundreds of layers so the 3D printer knows how to make your part. You don't have to be an expert on the slicing software to make parts. In the case of both Prusa and Bamboo Lab, they offer their free slicing software to download to your computer. You just need to know the basics because both Prusa and Bamboo Lab have standard preset profiles for the most common types of filaments. I'm using Bamboo Slicer and I simply choose which bed plate I have installed and which filament. For the phone holder, I chose white PLA and the cool plate. Now this model is a bit tricky because I've recognized that I need to enable supports for this model because otherwise I would be asking the printer to print into thin air, which isn't possible. So I just select support, enable support, and I choose tree type. Once I hit the slice button, you can see that the software has created support material for those areas of the model that I need it. The support material will be later removed once the part is being printed. Then it's just a matter of sending your file to the printer and time to watch the magic happen again. And here's the finished product. Teach me more 3D printer man. After you've gained some more experience in printing other people's designs, you may have some of your own ideas on things you want to print. As I mentioned earlier, you can hire someone from a website such as Fiverr to design your own models for 3D printing as one option. Another option is to jump into the CAD software. CAD means Computer Aided Design. There are many CAD software options available. However, I recommend you consider one of the following. The first is Tinkercad. Tinkercad is a free web-based app that manipulates basic shapes to create your custom designs. And it's relatively easy to learn. Next, there's Fusion 360. Fusion 360 is more of a traditional CAD software that's very powerful, but there will be a bit of a learning curve to get the hang of it. And you can sign up for the free personal hobby version of Fusion 360. It does have a limited number of editable files for, that you can use. Another option is the startup version. And if your company is less than three years old and you have less than 10 employees, you can also sign up for that free version of the software. The third one is Blender. Blender is a free software that is especially used for designing more organic shapes, such as cosplay and other related designs like helmets and things like that. Blender also has a pretty steep learning curve. However, the good news is that there are numerous sources of training out there, including various YouTube videos, and several people offer self-paced online courses. I have been focused on learning Fusion 360, so I've been using the following resources. Bob Claggett of I Like to Make Stuff offers a self-paced online tutorial called Fusion 360 for Makers Intro to CAD Design for $120. Bob has been a full-time YouTuber since 2015 and he has over 3 million subscribers. Next is CADClass.org. I'm using a Fusion book titled Mastering Fusion 360 by Jake Sugden and Joshua Manley that they just published during June of 2023. They also offer a companion self-paced online tutorial for $400 and their website is cadclass.org. Links are in the description below. Let me know in the comments below what 3D printing topics you would like me to do a deeper dive in for some of my future videos. In my next video, I'll show you how I made my decision on which 3D printer to buy using a simple scoring system that can help you decide which 3D printer to buy. And that link is here. Thanks for watching. Bye.